What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another episode of Just Jets, episode number 234. What is going on? Excited today to get into some Hassan Reddick. The New York Jets heading down to Carolina for week two of the preseason. And the voicemails are rocking and rolling. People have a lot to say on the Jets preseason and Hassan Reddick. For the regular season in week four, myself, Ryan Greenbean, will all be in attendance doing some promo for the Talking Jets event. We are live every Tuesday night, so hopefully you watched us last night, but you're going to hear me talk about it until this event happens. We have 10 tickets left to Jets Broncos week four of the regular season. So if you're thinking about getting tickets, you want to act on that before they are gone. Ticket includes a tailgate with tailgate Joe on field access after the game. And of course, hanging out with us sitting up in section 312 for the game. Really excited for it. And that's going to be my lone Jets appearance at a home game. I think actually I shouldn't say that. I, I, I say that with knowing that there is a chance that I'm at three more additional Jet games on top of that. So this rant that I'm about to go on, or I don't know if rant's the right word, but I'm going to vent my frustrations for you. Sorry. Uh, you guys are, are also my therapy. I know talking through the Jets with other Jet fans is very therapeutic. Um, I, I, it's just as therapeutic for me as it is for you. So I'm going to use this time, uh, cause I need a little therapy on this one. The, uh, it, it is becoming impossible for a day involving the New York jets, not to involve five hours in the car. And it is driving me absolutely insane. So I'm a long Island guy and the jets play and practice in New Jersey, So for me to go to a Jets game, we're talking a couple hours each way in the car. And now for the Jets to go to a Jets practice, we're talking a couple hours each direction in the car. I am sick and tired of you Jersey folks getting the getting the monopoly on Jets events. It used to be split. There was an understanding that the Jets practiced on Long Island and a a, a young Matt O'Leary would would get to go in the car with his dad eight minutes down Hempstead Turnpike to see the New York Jets. And now that is no longer the case. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i sorry, Jersey fans. You you guys have it very good with the now the practice facility there and the Jets games happening there. But it's a nightmare for us on Long Island to, to get there. So it makes me not want to go. Now, I love, 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 love getting to, to talk to Jet fans while I'm there, meet people, hang out, and watch the practice. The thing is, I love it way too much. And then I and then I'm like, you know what? Like I'm I'm excited for it. I go the drive there, it stinks, and but then I get there and I have the best time ever. And then I sit in traffic going to that god awful George Washington Bridge. Whoever invented the George Washington Bridge, I'd like to have a word with because th- that infrastructure, something is clearly wrong if there is always construction and traffic on that vessel. It's just un, un- unreal, unbelievable. Sorry for the rant. Sorry for the frustration. Just took me two and a half hours to get back home. And I did the recap of training camp. And now I'm doing the podcast before doing Talking Jets later. So I'm sorry I had to vent the frustration out there. But it is what it is. I will still do it for this team because I love this team. And I say I'm frustrated. I say I don't want to do it. Why do I I ask myself, why do I do it? And then twice a year I'm going for over the summer. And I usually go to a jet game or two as well in the regular season. So... Anyway, maybe maybe some of you relate to that if you're a Long Islander like me. If you're from Jersey and it's five minutes from you, I'm envious. <laughs> I hate you. Not really, but <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, guys, let's get into it. So Hassan Reddick has been the big story this week. And uh, he earlier on Monday asked for a trade. Joe Douglas quickly came out and released a statement, said we're not trading him. And it's getting ugly now. Granted, I'm not saying that this is it, fold up shop. There's no way that the Jets are getting a deal done with us on Reddick and he's never going to play it down for them. This is not what I'm what I'm saying here. But at the same time, I think we have to be realistic about the situation. It doesn't look good really for for either side. And you might be confident at home that, you know, Hassan Reddick can't afford to sit out and he's going to play. So, you know, what's there to worry about? There's no reason to panic. And again, I, I get that, but this doesn't negate from the fact that it is it is a bad look and it is a 
issue and a stress point for the 2024 Jets and what's otherwise been a really fun offseason and like had some really good vibes in training camp so far. If you saw my video yesterday, my recap of training camp, I, I was thrilled with the performance that I saw yesterday. I really was because the defense looked good. They looked strong. And offensively, at times, they looked very good as well in the second half of practice. But having this uh, Hassan Reddick situation where your best pass rusher is is sitting out with, you know, holding out and waiting for a new contract and the Jets are kind of digging their heels in, it, it's a little frustrating. And I know a lot of Jet fans are uh, taking the organization side on this. And I think, you know, if we're being honest with ourselves, I think everyone deserves a little bit of blame on this one. Um, you know, the, from Hassan Reddick's side, we'll start there. Everyone, is, there's obviously a lot of blame. For most Jeff fans, put most of the blame on him. Potentially going back on his word on um, in negotiations, the that whole portion of it. Yeah, I don't think Reddick and his camp has handled this 100% perfectly. I don't. I, I think they absolutely could have handled it better. Could have did a hold in, could have been there, uh, could have communicated better. All things that jump out to me right now the other side of it that doesn't make sense to me from the from the Jets point of view and whether you want to put that on Joe Douglas or Woody Johnson and Woody Johnson does have to be a part of this because he he's the one with the purse he's got the money so who knows what this if Joe Douglas is saying we want to pay him and Joe Douglas and uh Woody Johnson's like we're not doing that then that hamstrings the GM so we're maybe taking out our anger on the wrong guy but also at the same time Douglas as the GM is responsible, so he, he deserves some of the the blame as well because you you trade for this guy and you're unable to get him in the building. That part of that's on you because he was your contingency plan or your pivot after letting uh, Bryce Huff walk, and that's really where it goes down to. And I I see it. Some again, some fans are like, well, Hassan Reddick is is an upgrade. He's better than than Bryce Huff and. I'll say over the last four years, he's definitely been better what Bryce Huff is. But at this point, Reddick's going to be 30 at, during the regular season. And Bryce Huff is entering his age 26 season. Hassan Reddick from age 26 to 29 was a perennial double digit sack guy. So it's really about like paying the guy for what they've done or paying the guy for what they will do or not will do might be ambitious, but paying for what's to come with Bryce Huff as a player who is entering their prime for Reddick, who's on the end of his prime. I, I think he could, you know, that's not saying he can't have a good year this year and maybe even next year, but, you know, Hassan Reddick's not going to be the same guy for, for too much longer. Um, but with that said, the thought that, that Joe Douglas would pivot and trade the 2026 third round pick for Reddick, like the reason why it didn't cost you a whole lot to get a perennial double-digit sack guy is because everyone in the world knew that he needed a new contract. That was that's that's part of the reason why he was sold for pennies on the dollar from from Philly. And for whatever reason, whether it's on uh, Joe Douglas or if it's on Woody Johnson uh, for not ponying up and and redoing the money, and me saying not ponying up and paying isn't saying give Hassan Reddick. $30 million a year and a $100 million contract for the next four years. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Get, get him more guaranteed money this year. Tack on an additional year on the contract if you have to. If that's enough to get him in the bill, that, that should be enough. And I guess part of it too is it's a little strange we haven't heard any leaks on what the Jets offered or what Hassan Reddick is actually looking for. Maybe that's the next step here in this process. But... <clears throat> Still, nonetheless, it is a frustrating process. I don't think there's any any way around that one. Um, and and also, too, like my last thing on this, and again, this might spark a mini rant here, so apologies in advance, but you gotta, you have to be kidding me with the argument from some fans. The same fans who are saying that Hassan Reddick is an upgrade over Bryce Huff are also saying that the Jets don't need Bryce, uh, that the Jets don't need Hassan Reddick. Let him rot is what I hear. The Jets don't need Reddick. And I understand the logic of the Jets have more leverage, so wait it out. But the Jets very much so do need Hassan Reddick this year. And the pushback that I got when I said 
the what I tweeted out when this news broke was how could you be stressed out or how, how could you panic about a guy who's never played for the Jets yet? While yes, Hassan Reddick was not on the 2023 New York Jets who had an elite level defense. That defense had Bryce Huff and John Franklin Myers, who I don't know if you missed this, are no longer here. Bryce Huff and John Franklin Myers are not on the 2024 New York Jets. Bryce Huff, because Joe Douglas did not have the foresight to sign him a year ago when you had fans like myself begging him to sign him a year ago. And John Franklin Myers, they sold for pennies on the dollar to save money, essentially, because they wouldn't redo his deal. And immediately they trade him to Denver and he redoes his deal with the Denver Broncos. So the Jets have combined with uh, Bryce Huff and John Franklin Myers, 13 and a half sacks and 117 pressures to make up. Will McDonald's not doing that on his own. You could be as you could be the biggest Will McDonald fan in the world, and you know for a fact he's not going to do that for you this year. Maybe he can give you seven of those sacks, roughly, but he's not coming up with 117 pressures unless he's winning Defensive Player of the Year, and even that's asking a lot. They very much do need Hassan Reddick. And for a team that is going to be playing with a lead, which is what we discussed, was one of the main reasons why I wanted them to keep Bryce Huff. But then again, once that leaves and they pivot to Hassan Reddick, you get that because Hassan Reddick is a closer. He's someone that you put on the field in obvious pass situations when the opposing teams are down in the third and fourth quarter, trying to throw to get back into a game. When it's third and 12, you send the house, and more often than not, Hassan Reddick gets home. Probably 12 and a half to 16 times a year, Hassan Reddick is going to get home and come up with a big play. And oh yeah, he also has a tendency to strip sack guys, which is a, a major benefit because the Jets defense, if you could criticize them in any way, would be that sometimes they struggle with turnovers. They don't get enough turnovers. So this idea that some fans have that the Jets are are fine, everything is fine and dandy if Hassan Reddick's not here, is insane to me again because not only is it just not Hassan Reddick but it's also not Bryce Huff and it's not John Franklin Myers as well so then you are your top you have Jermaine as a starter which is is great I love Jermaine Johnson perfect but then you have a Will McDonald who I think the Jets don't view as a every down player yet can he be a good situational pass rusher like what Bryce Huff was for you in his first couple years with the team Yes, I think he could do that. And Michael Clemens, who on his best day is Walmart John Franklin Myers. So I, I where is this coming from? Are you going to rely on a UDFA and, and Eric Watts or Brandon McGregor? I, I like those guys as developmental pieces and depth, but come on. We, we know that this defense needs three, four edge rushers in here. Last year's team had John Franklin Myers, Bryce Huff, Jermaine Johnson, and Carl Lawson as their four. And Carl Lawson ended up, you know, working his way out, um, unfortunately, due, due to poor play, and 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 Will McDonald. So, like, it, it, it's really not the same situation. It's not. If Huff and JFM and Hassan Reddick aren't here, you're going to notice it. And I'm not saying that like, oh, if, if Sun Rick's not here, he fold up shop. Sorry, you tried. That's it. You know, we're not going to play this year because of it. That's obviously not the case. But to act like the Jets won't seriously miss him is, is something that has broken my brain over the last three days. I apologize. That's your view on it. I, I just, I, I don't get me. I don't get it. You lost me on it. You lost me on it. Let's end the rant and get into, well, maybe another thing that'll cause me to rant. Probably, hopefully not as much. That that's, can't be good for the voice that's still trying to come back <clears throat> a week later. The Jets head to Carolina for week two of the preseason. And the New York Jets played the Carolina Panthers in the preseason last year. I believe it was also, it might have technically been week one of the preseason because they also played uh, against, I uh, no, could have been week two. Of the preseason. They they played the Hall of Fame game. They also played Tampa Bay, which I believe Tampa came before Carolina, now that I think out out loud. But again, moral of the story, last year the New York Jets played against Carolina, and they also did a joint practice against the Carolina Panthers, which the New York Jets will do 
on Thursday. But last year, the Jets starting offense, specifically the starting offensive line, was horrendous the week in the joint practice against Carolina. They got beat so bad. That's the episode of Hard Knocks when you had Robert Sala screaming at the Jets offensive line in the hotel uh, that practice week against the Carolina Panthers. We then know that Carolina ends up being the worst team in the NFL. Uh, and granted, they, they move on from Brian Burns and things look a little bit different for that Panthers defense now in 2024. But moral of the story, what I would like to see the New York Jets do, I need them to go down to Carolina this week, starting with the practice. And then in the if it doesn't happen in the game, I'll explain why it's not a big deal. But in the practice especially, they need to dominate Carolina. Like what they did against Washington. Last week, the New York Jets hosted the Washington Commanders. In the preseason game, they end up winning, but it's not like they dominated. And a main reason for that is because the Jets didn't play starters and put a pin in that momentarily. But in the practice, the Jets' first team offense and defense went against both Washington's first team offense and defense. And guess what? The defense was really good, and they made life hard for the young quarterback and Jane Daniels. And offensively, they, they were really good. Garrett Wilson manhandled poor Emmanuel Forbes in the in the joint practice. This time, going down to Carolina, same thing. The, the Jets defense, I would like to see the Jets defense give Bryce Young fits. I think they do. And offensively, I need this offensive line to hold up. And they should because on paper, they are significantly better and they're deeper. And we've seen them play better too. Like Tyron Smith, has he practiced every day? No, he hasn't. I and mean, this is... Not new information. This is something that we expected. When he's played, he's been good. And when he hasn't played, they've had Olu Fashionu come in. And I think he looks, he absolutely looks the part, especially as a pass protector. Morgan Moses has been good. John Simpson, we got to give John Simpson credit. Uh, as a free agent signing, he's had a really strong camp. Joe Tipman, after getting the snap issues figured out, has had a strong camp. Elijah Vera Tucker, I think, has just been steady, man. Like, you don't really hear a whole lot about Elijah Vera Tucker. I feel like he's just been you know, kind of a steady Eddie guy. And that's, that's a positive as well. So I need this team and specifically the offense to look good in, in this practice, because I don't think we're going to see many starters or regulars in the first pre in the second preseason game, excuse me, here against Carolina. Uh, really the only starter on offense that you saw last week was Joe Tittman. And after a strong showing, and good practice week as well. I would be surprised if we see him in this game. Other than that, like regulars, if you consider Corley a regular and Will McDonald, those are the, maybe like you see those guys, but I don't think you see Tyler Conklin, uh, or Jeremy Rucker. I don't think you see uh, Tony Adams or even like a Jamie and Sherwood. Like I, Olu probably plays. I'll give o Olu probably plays and Braylon Allen probably plays, but we're not seeing Bree, Scarrett, Sauce, Quinnen, none of those guys. So I want to see in the practice, the Jets go down there and dominate and come away with a, a an impressive showing against, unfortunately, like, sorry to say it, but a team that stinks in, in Carolina, a team that isn't very good. Let's go to voicemails. We'll start with our guy, James from New Jersey. Maddie, yo, what's going on, man? James from New Jersey. What's up, How buddy? are you? As promised, I'm giving you a call. It's been, I guess, I said it last week on the Jake Asner show. It's been very crazy for me between my own work and then I'm transitioning to become a football coach on on actual staff this year. So I have a lot going on. So that's why I haven't been uh, calling in. But I have still been listening to your content, along with their Jet YouTubers. And again, this is just, again, we're getting to it, man. I don't have much to say. It's just we're rolling into it. And unfortunately, I'm on that jet side where I believe it when I see it. I just want to see the Jets come out swinging on, on the first season and see if they look like in preseason. Until then, I'm holding my breath, and we'll see what happens from there. Until then, man, I hope you're holding up. You're doing amazing on the YouTube content. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm glad you're evolving for you and all the YouTubers out there. And for you, man, the sky's the limit. But anyway... Calling you as I promised. Let's we get this before the curtain call. Before you put this episode in, and as always, go Jets. Yeah, I had to. Man. Thank you, James. I had to start the the episode with this one. Uh, James is a good one and an OG. 
Glad to talk to him on Jake Asman. Glad to hear from him again, uh, calling in and, and checking in. It's uh, exciting times for uh, for Jet fans right now, and love to hear that one. You're still checking in with us and watching. That that means a lot. And number two, and you're coaching. I, I can't wait to one day, you know, potentially coach kids. Like I, I don't have the play experience to do football like I'm a huge football fan obviously and I learned a lot watching it but I haven't played it but I was a baseball player going growing up and I'd love to coach kids um, and work with kids and give back to the community um, they felt that way like when I taught, taught broadcasting in a way and it helped interns and like I don't know I, I that stuff really means a lot to me um, I like helping out the next generation. So I give you a lot of props because that's something that I'd like to do as well. James, again, appreciate you calling in and, and checking in with us. Let's go to Max in New Jersey. He wants to talk players to watch for in the preseason. Hi, this is uh, Max and Toy from home in New Jersey. And here, is two, here are a couple players I want to see in the preseason again, a couple of starters. So we play Commander Saturday. We play the Panthers on the 17th. And we play the Giants on the 14th. Here are three players I want to see. So the first player I want to see is Malachi Corley. The reason I want to see him is because hopefully he's a very good receiver. I, I mean, when the Jets were drafting, I wanted the Jets to get Brendan Rice. You know, and I was a little mad I got Corley, but, you know, I'm starting to like to pick more. And if Malachi Corley is good, maybe I made a mistake analyzing the receivers and maybe make a mistake, made a mistake with um, analyzing Malachi Corley because he could be a good slot receiver compared to Debo Samuel. I want to see Braylon Allen in the next – three preseason games. I mean, he could be a really good running back to the Jets. And a defensive player I want to see is Quantas Sigurds. Sigurds. There's been reports he's looking good in camp, and he could be a future um, starting corner in this league. Hopefully, Quantas Sigurds is a very good player. What's your thoughts on this and goes, Jets? Yeah, those are good players to watch and, and keep an eye on. For me, in the game that we saw, Corley, I thought, had an unbelievable play on a tip. It was kind of like a tip drill kind of play from, uh, I believe, Zach Kuntz had the ball thrown his way, and he was in the process of dropping it. And Corley grabbed it and, and was able to run for an extra few yards there. And um, that that was exciting for me. Stiggers is a name that's going to get brought up a ton because of how strong he's looked in, uh, the tra- in training camp. And mini camp before that i thought uh jarek bernard converse a corner who the jets took a year prior in the draft had a strong showing and leonard taylor um as well braylon allen's a name you you mentioned too he was he stole the show i'm looking forward to all those guys coming out there again in this second game against the panthers and i just i'm going to reiterate i don't think we see any starters so it's going to be a lot of those same names rotating through again and that's what I'm. That's what I'm looking for this week. Let's go to Travis from Ohio. Travis, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Matt. Travis from Ohio. Hey, buddy. I know everybody's sick of talking about it's on Reddick and everything, but here's my take on it, real quick. I obviously want to see him at practice. I think all Jet Nation does. I want to. I think everybody wants to see him ball out and be a part of the team, learn the defense. Um, uh, I'm for the players that I hope he um, actually gets to get paid what he's worth. But uh, he's also on his contract and that he signed. So, uh, and he, the more he sits out, the more money he's losing. He doesn't have any real leverage. And then we gave up a 26 third round pick for him. Well, if he doesn't resign, then we're going to get a 26 third round comp pick for him. So that that's going to be a wash. It just sucks not having him on, having him on the field. So anyway, you know, I love you, buddy. And I got a special somebody that actually wants to say hi because she's always listened to you, me listen to your podcast, and you've heard me talk to her. Here's Ireland. What's up, Matt? How's it going? Love you, buddy. Number one fan club. That's right. Number (laughs) one fan club. Have a great rest of the week, and go Jets. Bye. I love it. 
shout out thank you so much to you, both of you guys for for listening and supporting it means means the world uh i i love it i love it good good stuff that made me my day made me smile here so i appreciate it trav that was that was great hassan reddick is it's again I, i'm gonna sound like a broken record but it's a really frustrating situation the jets are in because I thought it was a good pivot from Joe Douglas once you lose Bryce Huff to go and make the trade a conditional third round pick for Hassan Reddick. And as you point out, you know, if, if they don't sign him, they're going to get a comp pick back, you would assume, for Hassan Reddick, which is a good thing. That, that is, that's a plus. But the, the Jets need him in the, in the short term is not the, the flaw with that logic because you're right. Like, at the end of the day, if you, you don't sign him and you lose him, you're going to get compensation back. But the Jets are in a window now where they're they're trying to win this year and, and next year. I'm, I'm assuming that Rodgers is going to play in 24 and 25. So they're trying to win a championship over the next two years. And to maximize that championship window, they traded for Hassan Reddick, and I think they need, they need him on the field. So get, get him in here, man. They, they absolutely got to get Hassan Reddick in the building. It's, uh, it's time. Let's go to Jake from Jersey up next on the Hassan Reddick saga. Hey, what's up, Matt? I'm calling in right now. It's Jake from Jersey, by the way. I'm calling in uh, 3.15 on Monday, I guess right after Hassan has requested a trade. Wow. It's kind of ridiculous. And it's just such a – all I'm going to say is it's such a Jets thing to happen. I mean, hopefully it's just for, like, him trying to get more leverage, I guess. I'm not sure, but – Honestly, I did think he was actually like a more, I'd say a more well-rounded player than Huff, but looking back at it now, we should have just paid Huff. I mean, I was in that boat to begin with, but it didn't happen. So then, you you know, you try to talk yourself into everything, and Hassan's a great player, but this sucks. There's always something to training camp, man, I swear. But anyway, as always, go Jets. That's that's the thing. It's just it, it's frustrating, right? And it feels like there's always something. And you know, unfortunately for the Jets, I, I don't. It's hard to give them the benefit of the doubt on this because it's not like this is an organization where it's uh, you know they've had this success. You know, recently, like the Eagles have had a ton of success recently. They won a Super Bowl in 2017, and they just have perennial one of the best rosters in the league. They give the benefit of the doubt. The New England's of old gets the benefit of the doubt. Kansas City gets the benefit of the doubt now. You know, San Francisco gets the benefit of the doubt because they're just, those are teams that are always in the mix and always good in making the playoffs. The Jets have the longest drought in the entire league. So when something like this happens, naturally people are going to jump on them and say that they're wrong, that they're in the wrong. And I'm not saying that Joe Douglas is 100% and the Jets are 100% at fault. That's not true. It's not, but... You, you got to figure out a way because, as you mentioned, the this was a pivot after losing Bryce Huff. This is you, you got to figure out a way to get this guy in here because the Jets realized that they needed to do something once they lost Bryce Huff, and then they also decided to trade away John Franklin Myers, which didn't make sense at the time, and sure as hell doesn't make any sense right now either. And then Hassan Reddick maybe the light bulb goes off and goes, "Oh, I could get more money now." Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the reason for all this. Let's go to Peter in the beautiful Hudson Valley up next on, guess who, Hassan Reddick. Hey, Matt. It's Peter from the beautiful Hudson Valley calling in on this Monday late afternoon. Finally home after a busy day for myself and seeing the news that Mr. Reddick now wants a trade off of the team he only got traded to a couple of months ago. This situation has gone from the ridiculous to the absurd. Yes. I think I'm going to speak for a lot of Jets fans um, in saying how, the, I mean, let's look at it this way. The Jets did, so it seemed like they did all they could when the trade happened. They had a handshake deal in place. They offered him a contract. He didn't want to accept it. And they've been finding him, which, you know, they have every right to do. Uh, what were they going to do? Like have him sit out and not be fined and be like, "Well, we're all cool with that." <laughs> um, but sense. you know, come and play at some point, would you? Please, you know, like, <laughs> please come. <laughs> at this point, it's hard to say. Either he's going to have to come and play, 
um, with the Jets, or they're going to have to trade him for some equivalent edge player. And who at this point, in we're one week into you know preseason, is going to give up an edge player? Are the Jets going to trade with the Patriots because we're going to trade one disrupt, disgruntled edge player for another and try and get Matt Judon, who's a year older? There you go. I can't see that happening without both sides and both players agreeing to new deals with new teams. So that's not going to happen. And like I said, who else is going to want to give up an edge player? Because trading ready for draft picks at this point makes absolutely no sense. And we can't necessarily moneyball the situation and have, you know, Clemens and Donald and Inley and others you know, try and, you know, make up for Reddick's loss in double digit sacks and, and, you know, being good in the run game and stuff. So, I hope something happens to get this situation resolved, but it's, it's a little bit frustrating at this point. Um, obviously, uh, I hope you, you sound like you feel better, but, uh, you still don't seem to sound so well. So hopefully you get your voice back soon. Uh, Looking forward to one Jets drive back tomorrow night. Obviously, I won't be watching it while I'll be watching you guys on Talking Jets, but I'll see it afterward. And always, let's go Jets. Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, Yeah, the voice is a little bit better today, but I was not 100%. Well, I would say maybe like working at 70, 75%. I I don't feel as, I've said this for a few days, I don't feel as bad as I sound, but this is is just a new thing now. They were like, I don't know, we go through, anytime I get sick, I feel like I go through stages it's like ah woke up with a scratchy throat and then the next day it's like ah a little congested and it's like ah you're not gonna have a voice for four days <laughs> but you feel a lot better than what you did anyway um i would be really surprised if the jets trade for matt judon and i don't know if that was a little bit tongue-in-cheek which is totally fine as you said it's it, it just went from ridiculous to absurd it it, it is absurd because Again, to run to run everyone through it one more time, the Jets traded for Hassan Reddick. He has not played a single snap for the Jets, and then the player is requesting a trade. <laughs> optics wise, it's not great. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Optics wise, it is not great. I think he does get on the field at at some point. Uh, I really do. They need him, as I've mentioned, and as I've you know stated in the in the past, the the Jets do need Hassan Reddick. Um, obviously, I think the Jets have a touch more leverage than Hassan Reddick does, but the longer this goes, I don't think either side wins, honestly. PG is up next. He has a good question about the Jets' 53-man roster. Hello, Matt O'Leary. PG from Long Island here. A couple things. One, um, Hassan Reddick, you know, asking for a trade. Listen, there's, we have 53 men going to be on the roster. He has one jet contract. Counter it, show up. I know we're better with him, but uh, enough is enough already. Uh, number two, I just want to point out the tremendous play that that Malachi fully did in the in the game. What athleticism to pick that ball up off the ground before before it got incomplete, and then get a first down and actually um, run through some plays and, and get extra yardage. But what I want to talk about really is the 53-man roster. In particular, you know, what Jets get waived and then get picked up by another team? We have we have talent at the wide receiver. We have talent at the defensive line. We have talent in the cornerbacks. You can't really lose uh, JVD. Um, you know, we may have to keep six cornerbacks. Um so I guess my question to you here, and I know it's early, I know it's a tough question, but if you had to pick right now what three players the Jets wave that get picked up by another team, who would they be? Who, who would those mm. three players be? Um, mm. Again, I know it's a tough question, but I'd just be interested in your thoughts there. And as always, go Jets. I, li- I like this question a lot and it was very hard for me when I heard this question to come up with who it was going to be so I I might cheat slightly with my answer so I have three guys at three different positions the first my first thought was the defensive line because there's a lot of guys who unfortunately I don't think are going to make it that we like 
And the first guy that I came up with on my list is Eric Watts, UDFA from UConn. I'm going to put change that to Watts slash McKinley because I think that's what their last spot is going to end up coming down to. So let's assume Hassan Redick ends up being here and he's one. So Redick, looking at the, the depth chart, I would think you'd have to have uh, Redick, Quinn Williams, Javon Kinlaw, uh, Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald, Solomon Thomas, Leaky Fotu is seven. And then after that, it kind of gets a little bit. Michael Clemens is eight. I think they carry 10. And Leonard Taylor, I think, is going to be one of them. And then between Eric Watts and Tech McKinley for that last spot. Oh, boy, that's tough. That is a real tough decision. So not ideal. On the offense, my only offensive player, I'm going to say wide receiver Malik Taylor. I like Malik Taylor. I think he flashes a little bit every camp. He's a little bit of a deep threat. These wide receivers who I don't know keep getting jobs signed. Like Washington just signed Martavius Bryant. The guy's been out of the NFL for like six years, right? When was the last time he played? This is forever ago. Um, so someone like Malik Taylor, maybe if Brownlee doesn't make the roster, but I think he does. I'm, I'm going to say the Jets have seven wide receivers. Uh, and they go Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, uh, Xavier Gibson, Alan Lazard, Malachi Corley. Irv Charles and Jason Brownlee as the seven. And then that leaves someone like Malik Taylor. And then the last name, Chaz Surratt. Robert Tala loves the guy. The linebacker competition is going to be tough. I think Zaire Barnes has the leg up because he was a recent draft pick to be that fourth linebacker. I don't think they carry five. And I think Surratt is unfortunately the odd man out. So those are my three off relatively off the top of my head. And Again, we'll see if that ends up being the case, but the Jets will lose players. I'm going to guess probably somewhere between three to five guys that don't make this team sign somewhere else. We'll close with Dirty Jesus. Ah, Dirty Jesus in Ithaca. What's going on? I'm wondering if uh, the Jets let Redick sit. Does his salary count against the salary cap? If he is not reporting and not playing, um, I don't know. Can't remember if I checked with the uh, when the when the Steelers let Bell sit. If his uh, salary counted against the cap, can you clarify that for us? Thank you. Yeah. So my understanding is any roster player, which he would still be on the roster technically, even if he's not, you know, one of the if he doesn't report, unfortunately, he's going to count towards the cap. I think the only way that you wouldn't count towards the cap if you're on the uh, commissioner's exempt list. So that is, again, really the only way you can kind of get out of it. And that's like if you get like arrested or something like that. Like I think that's where like Henry Ruggs ended up on and. It, it, it's this is not a good situation for the Jets. They have to figure out a way to get him here because it's not like that cap space just goes away if he sits out. If he doesn't report, he's still here. And it, it doesn't do him any favors. It doesn't do the Jets any favors. And you can't just miss a, miss a year at this age for him. So get this done. Moral of the story, can we get this done, please? That is my hope for the New York Jets. By the time we are recording an episode a week from today, that Hassan Reddick is signed and reported with the Jets. How's that sound? Guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much. I'm Matt O'Leary. Catch you next time.